Hi, I'm Chris Tyrell, and I'm one of the scientists at the Milwaukee Public Museum. Our question for today is, what are some common trees we see around Wisconsin? Let's go find out. Now, when you're trying to identify a tree, you have to ask yourself a series of questions. So for example, when you come up to a tree, you should ask, does it have regular leaves, or does it have needles? Now, if it has regular leaves, the next question is, how do the branches attach to the main stem? So what I mean by that is, take for example, you can see that the main stem that I'm holding has two branches that come off on either side. This is called opposite branching, and you can see it keeps doing that all the way up the stem. Now compare that to this tree right here. Here we've got where there's the main stem, and there's a branch that comes off, and then another branch that comes off, and then it would continue up the stem alternating on either side. This is called alternate branching. Now the two final questions here are, when you have a regular leaf, you have to ask yourself, is it, is it a leaf, like a whole leaf, like this one? Or is the leaf broken up into all sorts of little tiny pieces? So you can see how this has little leaflets on it. The other thing to ask is, what does the leaf look like? What is its shape? Does it have lobes? Is it completely round? Does it have little teeth on the side? All of those questions will help you to identify what it is. So if the tree has needles for leaves, needles are leaves, um, there's two main trees that, that it most commonly will be. There's actually several other ones that have needles, but the two main common ones are, are pines and spruces. So now to tell whether you have a pine or a spruce, you take a look at the needles. If the needles are in groups, so you can see this, this packet of needles right here is grouped together. They're all attached. If I just hold one, they'll, they'll stay attached. That means it's a pine. So in groups, it's a pine. If, on the other hand, the needles are um, coming off the stem in as single pieces, so they're all in one, um, one point of attachment, right? They're not connected together in a bundle. Uh, and they're very pokey. This is more than likely a spruce. Now, when we have regular leaves that aren't in those little tiny leaflets, we take a look and, and see how they're shaped. So, for example, I have this leaf right here. You can see there are five points to it. It's kind of shaped like, like your f hand if you were to spread your fingers out. Compared to this leaf right here, which has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or maybe even ten um, lobes, we call them, sticking out of the leaf. And those are not really arranged as if you were had a palm facing out. They're arranged more like a, like a stick with, with things coming out on the side. Each one of these is pointed on the edge, ends, but this one is more generally rounded in shape, and this one is more rectangular in shape, or, or maybe even more like a, a diamond shape if you were to draw a diamond around it. So this right here, this is an oak tree, and there are lots of different oaks in Wisconsin, and this is a maple, and there are also several different maples in Wisconsin. So you can kind of compare those leaves. Now I talked about leaves having many small leaflets, right? So being one full leaf or having many small parts. And So here's an example of one with many small parts. You can see this tree behind me also has leaves with many small parts. So this tree, we, here we've got, um, you know, the small part, well, they're not that small, they're, they're bigger parts, but there's, um, what, probably, I don't know, maybe a dozen or so of these smaller leaf-like things that make up the full leaf compared to this one right here where you only have five that are making up the whole leaf. So this big one right here, this is, this is a black walnut, um, and the dead giveaway on this tree is the uh, fruits, which there's some fruits right here on this walnut. So uh, walnut has these smaller leaf leaflets, and there's many of them. And this other one that I had, this is an ash tree. So these uh, smaller leaflets, and they... Um, are ending in a single one. That's our, our ash. Uh, compare that to the walnut here. So this is an ash tree, and ash trees have uh, new, uh, not as many small leaflets as the walnut, and one of the giveaways for ash trees in Wisconsin is, unfortunately, they're almost uh, always dead uh, nowadays, because there is a bug, an insect, that carries a pathogen that kills them. It's the emerald ash borer. So you can see above me here is a, is a dead ash tree that um, we've got here. One last thing I want to say is, you know, when we looked at the oak versus the maple, we saw that the leaves were 
Um, they both had points on them, but they had different sort of general shapes and different numbers of points. The other thing is, um, there is there's a small set of trees in Wisconsin that have the opposite branchings. Remember when I showed you opposite branching? And I remember those by an acronym, MAD, M-A-D, and that stands for maple, ash, and dogwood. So those three trees, and, and arguably dogwood in Wisconsin is mostly a shrub, it's not really a big tree, but if you come across a tree that has opposite branching, it's either going to be a maple or an ash. And maple versus ash is, maples have these single, uh, single leaves, and the ash have multiple smaller pieces to their leaves. And then you can contrast that with, you know, the maple versus the oak, whereas oak has the alternate branching, maple has opposite. And then when we were looking at the walnut versus the um, ash, the walnut had opposite or alternate branching, and the ash had opposite branching. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for joining me on this adventure through identifying trees, and I hope to see you next time. In the meanwhile, get out and start botanizing.